Welcome to the demonstration of Harbor Touch Hospitality. My name is Adam Small, manager of POS training here at Harbor Touch. If you have any questions throughout the call, uh, we ask that you please use the GoToWebinar chat panel on the right hand side of your screen. We'll be answering any questions that come in through the chat as we go through the demonstration. Before we jump into the software, I want to take some time to tell you about the services you'll receive if you choose Harbor Touch. Because Harbor Touch includes more than just a POS software. The free POS program entitles Harbor Touch's customers to a fully programmed point of sale system with an on site installation and a variety of training resources. The program includes 24 7 technical support and a full warranty. The support team is based here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and they're always available to help out with any questions or concerns that you have with your system. And the warranty lasts the full length of the agreement. So if there are any hardware issues, a replacement will be shipped overnight for free. Harbor Touch is able to provide these services for free due to its revolutionary business model. Because Harbor Touch provides a credit card processing, we can give away the hardware and software at no upfront cost to you. You don't spend thousands of dollars to get a new system installed. Instead, you pay for Harbor Touch with a small monthly fee and a few cents each time you run a credit card transaction. This means that Harbor Touch is inherently tied into the success of your business. Because your business is doing well, it means that ours is doing well too. The free POS program is like an investment that Harbor Touch makes in your business. And with the powerful tools that the POS system provides, our businesses will be able to grow together. Ensuring that the hardware and the software are always operating smoothly reduces Harbor Touch's support costs while providing the business with stability and security. Developing new features that improve the business's bottom line provide Harbor Touch with an incentive to add even more. If a station is having technical difficulties, Harbor Touch is mutually suffering from the inability to process the credit cards. We'll now take a look at the hardware that you'll receive when you order a Harbor Touch Hospitality Point of Sale system. The Elite 2 is an all in one POS station which features a 15 inch touchscreen display, encrypted credit card reader, and a solid state hard drive, along with a sleek aluminum casing to withstand the demand of business environments. All Harbor Touch Hospitality orders include an Elite 2 station, receipt printer, cash drawer, keyboard, and mouse. Several hardware accessories can be added at a low monthly cost. Thermal and impact remote printers, customer displays, caller IDs, digital scales, barcode scanners, and a kitchen video system can all be added to the order. We're now going to take a look at the Harbor Touch Hospitality software itself. Harbor Touch Hospitality is a very flexible product which can accommodate a number of different business environments. Today, we're going to be looking at how the software can be utilized across four broad industries. The bar industry, the counter service industry, the pickup and delivery industry, and the table service industry. Each user can log in with a unique four digit pin. We'll start by logging into our demo station as a bartender. The first thing we're going to see is the black screen category buttons, which run down the center of the page. These are used to sort through groups of items. Each screen category contains numerous menu items, which are the blue buttons on the right hand side of the screen. Menu items are the core building blocks of the system. The menu items appear on the customer's check, contain prices and choices. The system can have multiple pages of screen categories and multiple pages of items within these categories to help accommodate those larger menus. Beginning a ticket is as simple as selecting a menu item. Once the ticket is created, we can easily pay it out with cash using the fast pay buttons at the bottom of the screen. These buttons update dynamically to display exact change and common denominations of ones, fives, tens, and twenties. These buttons will also update dynamically depending on what the items are on the check and what the total is. Paying out a sale using the fast pay buttons will then display the totals and any change due back to the customer. These greatly benefit fast pace environments like bars and nightclubs, where quickly moving through the transactions and then moving on to the next customer in line is a high priority. If a customer wants to start a tab rather than cashing out right away, the bartender can select OK after ringing in an item. This will prompt the bartender for a custom ticket name. This allows the bartender to label the ticket with a descriptive name rather than an order number or a seat position as the customer is not restricted to a seat. They can also swipe the card on this screen and the ticket will take the name of the cardholder. 
This makes it easier to identify the ticket if a patron gets up to dance, plays billiards, or puts a song on the jukebox. If we swipe the credit card when there is no ticket selected, uh, the ticket will also take the name of the card holder, but it will also run a pre-authorization. When a credit card is swiped, a predetermined amount set by the business is pre-authorized to verify the credit card is active, has the funds necessary, and has not been otherwise stolen or compromised. A ticket is automatically opened under the name of the card holder as it appears on the card. If the customer does not exceed the pre-authorized amount, the transaction can be completed without running the card again. We'll now pay out a tab with a credit card by selecting the Pay button at the bottom of the screen. The tender options are available along the bottom with shortcut functions from the left and right hand sides. To pay for the exact total, we select our tender type, in this case credit, and then process the credit card. If the business accepts tips, the ticket will remain open and a message in red letters indicating the transaction still requires a tip will appear on the ticket. The bartender can then use the Hide Authorize button to hide the transactions until a later time when the tip is more convenient to be added to the check. Oftentimes, bartenders are going to add all of their tips at the end of the night, and using the Hide Authorize button removes those tickets which have already been paid out but only require the tips to be confirmed. This helps prevent the interface from becoming cluttered with older tickets. To add the tip, we just need to select the card and then select the Pay button again. From this interface, we can add a tip to the credit card transaction. Once the tip is added, the card can be finalized and then it will be completely removed from the interface. It's also common for bar patrons to request their last round. By selecting the previous item ordered, it's going to display the item functions on the right hand side of the screen and the bartender can select repeat. This will add another round to the ticket. This helps the bartender save time from ringing in the item using the menu again. It can also be used for a more complex order, which requires using choices, and it can be used for multiple patrons at the same time. If a mistake is made, the bartender just needs to select the item, which is going to show us the item functions on the right hand side of the screen, and then they can hit remove item. This is going to quickly remove the item from the ticket. If the item was already committed and sent to the printer, the bartender will need to select a void reason to cancel out the transaction. A void print will notify the bar or the kitchen that the item has been canceled. Another feature commonly utilized in bar environments is a hidden tax. In this demonstration, food items calculate with tax in addition to their price, which is displayed at the bottom of the ticket. However, the alcohol uses a hidden tax function where the tax is incorporated into the price. A 6% hidden tax is being applied so this $4 item can reflect in the reports that the customer was charged $3.77 for the beer and $0.23 cents for the tax. This eliminates the need to count out and distribute small change, which is especially helpful in an environment like a bar, which is often focused on speed and efficiency. This is also going to apply to the happy hour functionality. Happy hour and other time-based discounts can apply automatically. A discount can be configured to reduce the price of all domestic drafts between 5 and 6 p.m. on weekdays, or half of all well drinks on Mondays. Either way, the bartender doesn't need to check which items are eligible or what time the item's gonna be eligible for that discount. All right, that's gonna just about do it for the bar section. We're going to log out, which is gonna take us back to that login screen. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the bar environment, anything that we took a look at so far, feel free to ask them using the chat on the right-hand side. If we don't have any questions, we're going to go ahead and move on to the counter service environment. We're going to do that by signing in as our cashier and taking a look at this industry. In many ways, the counter service environment is going to be similar to the bar environment. However, there are some changes that we can make to the system, which is going to allow the Harbor Touch hospitality software to operate more effectively in quick service restaurants, fast food places, pizzerias, drive throughs delis, and other fast paced environments. Modifications are common in counter service businesses. In our demonstration, selecting a simple item like a bowl of soup does not prompt for a choice set, while selecting a salad is going to prompt us for a choice of dressing. We can even select something more complex like a turkey club sandwich. This has many choices such as bread, cheese, and additional vegetables or condiments. The black buttons are choice sets and the blue buttons are choices. Choice sets contain groups of choices, just like the black screen category buttons contain groups of the blue menu item buttons. Choices can also be configured to upcharge the price of the item, which can be added like we see here with bacon onto the turkey club sandwich. 
for ice cream shops, delis, and other environments using a scale, items can be configured to prompt for a weight. Harbor Touch will provide a digital scale that can transmit the data directly to the point of sale system, or the information can be entered in manually. If a 4.2 ounce of ice cream is ordered at 75 cents, then the total of that transaction will be $3.15, which will be displayed here. In addition to weighable items, this functionality can also be used to prompt for quantities of bagels, cupcakes, and other items which are commonly sold in various quantities. When completing a transaction, our demonstration system will automatically number the ticket. The number automatically resets at a number determined by the business. This allows for the order to be called out once it's complete. This is going to be more effective in the counter service industry compared to the custom ticket name which we saw in the bar industry. Selecting the customer database in the top right hand corner is going to display the customer database. By entering any criteria into the search field, the customer list will dynamically update to find the closest matching name, phone number, or membership ID. These criteria can be entered using the on-screen keyboard or physical keyboard. You can also use the caller ID to bring up the customer's phone number or scanning a barcode or swiping magnetic stripe card, which is going to link with the membership ID. Once the customer is selected, their location information is displayed along with important notes and their favorite items ordered. By selecting a favorite item, the ticket will begin automatically with this item already added to it. In addition to quickly beginning the ticket, Harbor Touch Hospitality tracks the common modifications and adds them automatically. These can be changed if necessary by selecting the item, uh, but will often remain the same over many visits. This is going to reduce the time that it takes to complete the transaction significantly since we can ring in a complex item which is one touch of a button. As a customer frequents the business, they can also accrue loyalty points from their purchases. These points can then be redeemed for discounts on future transactions. In this example, Anna has over 100 points and decides to redeem them for a free sandwich. We can see the discount being applied on the check here. In addition to the loyalty discounts, items and tickets can both have discounts manually applied to them. Here we can see that when we select an appetizer and use discount, it will allow us to apply the discount for half price apps. We can also use discount ticket at the bottom of the screen to apply this first responders discount to the entire transaction. We're going to remain logged in as a cashier to review the pickup and delivery industry. However, our cashier is going to be handling all of the pickup and delivery transactions as if they were placed over the phone. When a customer calls in, the caller ID is going to automatically pop up with that customer's information. If the customer isn't in the system yet, it's going to prompt us to add the customer. We'll select this customer and then navigate to the menu to place their order. Using the choices and choice sets, we can ring in a complex pizza order, such as a meat lover's pizza with a deep dish crust, no ham or bacon on the first half, and add peppers and onions to the second half. The customer plans on paying for the food once it arrives, so we select OK without adding any payments at this time. On the next call, the customer requests an order of 50 wings. However, they want 25 hot wings and 25 garlic habanero wings. We can use the special Allocate Quantities screen to determine how many of each choice the order will contain. This is useful for items like a dozen donuts or an appetizer sampler. We'll have this customer pay with a credit card over the phone rather than paying with cash when the food arrives. To do so, we'll select pay and manually enter in the credit card number. This ticket's going to remain open so it can have a tip added and so it can be transferred to the driver. Because today is a slower day at this business, we only have two drivers on shift. We know which driver will return next so we'll select list view to access our POS management functions and then select transfer to and select the next available driver. We're going to transfer both of these orders to David. On busier days, we'll need to use a dispatch user to store the delivery transactions. Instead of transferring to the driver, the cashier will just transfer to the dispatch user. When the order is transferred, the delivery instructions are automatically printed on the kitchen print with a barcode at the bottom. When the driver returns, they can grab the oldest order and any other orders in the same area, then scan the bottom of the kitchen print using the barcode scanner. The orders will automatically be assigned to the driver and tracked before they leave. Regardless of how busy the business is, 
the driver would complete their deliveries and then return with change or credit card slips. Upon returning, they log in and each of the transactions assigned to the driver are displayed. The driver then can select all of the cash transactions and then select pay with cash. Afterwards, they can select the credit card transactions and then select assign tips. At this point, the driver can then turn around, grab the next round of delivery orders and then head out on their way. On busier days, this is when they would scan the barcode at the bottom of the kitchen print, which would automatically transfer those orders to the driver so they can pay them out on this screen once they get back. In addition, our driver needs to keep track of their driver bank. That's the amount of cash that they're carrying on them for change at any given time. By selecting the personal page in the top right corner, the driver can view their cash due to the restaurant. This is the exact amount of money the driver has in their pocket. They can keep an eye on this total throughout their shift instead of constantly counting their cash. When they pass the threshold set by the business, they can then count out their change and ensure it matches and complete a cash drop to record the money given back to the manager. At the end of their shift, they would select clock out and declare their cash tips. They would then turn in their remaining cash due to the manager. All right, that's gonna wrap up pickup and delivery. If you guys have any questions about any of the features that we saw while looking at this industry, please feel free to use the chat to ask those now. If we don't see too many questions coming in, we're gonna go ahead and move on to a table service restaurant. Logging in as a server, we can see that the interface looks similar to our delivery driver. By selecting new table in the bottom left, we're prompted with our table layout. We can view the available tables as well as which tables are currently marked as closed or dirty. After selecting the available table, we can select the number of patrons and then select OK. Once the table is seated, we can return back to list view, but the server can also operate directly from host mode so they can always see the graphical table layout of the restaurant. We'll start a new ticket in host mode to determine how many patrons are at the table and then select OK. We'll notice that the name of the ticket now matches the name of the table rather than prompting for a custom name or assigning a ticket number. We'll now go back to the first table and assign a beverage order to each patron. We can determine which patron gets which drink by selecting the blue person icon and then selecting the drink. We'll also put in an appetizer order for this table. Notice how now that the order has been placed, our first table status has changed from seated to ordered. We'll go into the second table now and add drink orders for them. Once we've added the drink orders for the second table, we'll return to our first table to see that the customers are now ready to place their order. As we place the entree order, one of the customers is going to let us know that they like their steaks extra well done. We don't have a choice set prepared for extra well done, but we can use the special request button to let the kitchen know what to do. The special request feature will allow us to use a custom line of text that can print to the kitchen. Any common request can be handled by adding a choice, but we can add a special request for less common ones. This line of text will always print to the kitchen so the cook staff is aware of the changes to the order. After placing the rest of the entree orders, we'll move back to check on our other table. We'll place a round of drinks as this table is still waiting for the rest of their party to arrive. We can highlight the drinks to display the item functions and then repeat the round for all the customers simultaneously. In many cases, this greatly reduces the time taken to ring in another round for this table. This group has been looking at the menu for a few minutes and knows what they would like to order, but they don't want to order to go through until the third person arrives. We'll place their order and then use the kitchen hold function to prevent it from going to the kitchen. At this point, we're going to return to our other table which have finished eating and are ready for the check. We'll print the guest check and take it to their table. Here we can see the table status updated to reflect that the table has received the check. We'll now go back to the other table to see that the third person has arrived and are ready to place their order. We'll place their food order and then use the kitchen release to ensure that all of the customers get their food prepared at the same time. When we return to the other table to get the check, we find that the customers want some changes made before they close out. It turns out that they all want separate checks and that they want the appetizer to be split between them. Also, it appears we mixed up who had which drink. We can easily accommodate these changes by going back into the check. First, we'll highlight the appetizer and select the share item button. 
we can distribute this across all three patrons on the check. And if requested, we can split the item in different ways to reflect that one of them ate more than their fair share of the appetizer. Next, we'll use the item functions again to highlight the drinks which need to be moved and use the move item button to make sure that the right person is assigned the right drink. Once we have all the drinks assigned to the right customers, we'll select the split ticket option at the bottom of the screen. This will give us several different ways to split the check, with the first two options being used if certain guests wish to pay together or be split off from the rest of the group. However, for this table, we're going to select the third option where every customer will get their own check. At this point, our shift is over and we're ready to clock out. However, we still have one open table. We can transfer this ticket by going into list view where we find our ticket manipulation functions. Here, we can claim, transfer, and combine tickets. We'll transfer the open table to another server who is at the start of their shift and then clock out of the POS system. Once we've paid out or transferred all of our open tickets, we can end the shift by selecting the personal page at the top of the screen. We can review our transactions for the day and check the cash due to the restaurant if the server was keeping a personal bank. When they clock out, they'll be prompted to declare any cash tips before ending their shift. This will now conclude our overview of the table service industry. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now using the chat feature on the right hand side of your screen. If we don't see any questions, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the management functions in the back end of the system. We'll now take a look at the features and functions available from the management side of the software. To access the manager screen, we'll select the pencil icon at the top of the screen. We'll first take a look at how to customize the menu interface on the point of sale system. By selecting menu, it will show us a breakdown of all the screen categories, menu items, choice sets, and choices in the system. I can choose any menu item on the list to view that item's properties. From this screen, we can edit and change the menu item. The most common change would be to update the price. We can do this easily right from this interface. We can also change what categories the item appears in and what choice sets are attached to this item. At this point, I'll mention that when you receive your system, Harbor Touch will have already programmed the entire menu. You just need to submit your customer facing menu to us during the setup process, and we'll then have our dedicated team of programmers analyze your menu to determine how to set up the system so it's optimized for your business. There is no extra charge for this. Harbor Touch programmers oversee every order which is sent out. However, once you receive your system, you're free to make any changes you wish to it through the menu interface. If we select employees and then select edit on a particular employee, we can see the various options available to customize each user. Most of the info at the bottom of the screen is optional, but we can choose to track things such as the employee's address, email, phone number, start date, etc. A username and PIN are required in order for the employee to log in, and they'll also need to be assigned a job. A user will interact with the system differently depending on what job they're working, and it's possible to have multiple jobs assigned to one user, as sometimes the same employee may work as a bartender one shift and as a server on the next shift. The other major part of the employee screen are the permissions. We can determine exactly which features and functions each user has access to using the interface to the right. For example, if we don't trust this user to access the cash drawer, do discounts, or change the tax rate, we can just deselect those permissions and they'll no longer have access to those functions. We'll then navigate over to the job screen. The job screen will allow us to further customize what each user sees and what they can do depending on the job and the industry. Job is where we would control how a user logs in and out of the system and what buttons and features they'll have access to, such as list view, hide authorized, all tickets, and host mode. We can also set the pay rate for each job at the top of this screen. And there's a section to determine how a user interacts with other users' tickets. This will determine how the reporting will track a transaction if it was handled by multiple users. We'll then back out and take a look at the sections. Sections are also used heavily to customize the program depending on what industry the business serves. This system has sections divided by order type, bar, counter service, delivery, or table service. But this could also be set to be different rooms within the same restaurant, such as a main dining room, a side dining room, a patio, things like that. Alternatively, it can be used to track which orders are for here and which are to go. 
Any way we wish to divide the business can be handled using these different sections. This will determine how a ticket is named and how it can be manipulated in the system. Settings such as automatic gratuity and expected turnaround time are also configured here. If we select layout, we can customize the graphical table interface used with host mode. Here we can adjust the size, shape, and the positioning of the tables on that screen. We'll then take a step out and take a look at the discount section. The discount screen allows us to configure a variety of different discount types within the system. There are three main ways we can affect the price of the item or the ticket. By forcing a new price, by taking a set dollar amount off, or by taking a percentage off. Any of these discounts can be configured to apply to either the entire ticket or just an individual item. We can restrict these discounts to apply only to specific items or groups of items as well. For certain discounts, we may want to prompt for a reason as to why the discount is given. If a manager is going to comp a full meal, the owner may want to know why. The manager then can then type in the reason when the discount is given, such as there is a fly in the soup or server spilled wine on the guests. If they wish to track coupon codes, they can opt to use reason is numeric. We can also set up discounts to apply only at specific times. So we can configure a happy hour discount that only applies on certain days and during certain hours, or we can configure a restaurant week discount, which only applies for a set date range. We'll then take a step back and navigate over to the advanced screen. The first three options on the advanced screen allow us to further customize the user interface based on which job role they're performing. Screen categories allow us to determine which jobs can see which categories. So if we're not able to order food at the bar, we can hide all of the food categories from the bartender's menu. We can also configure discounts by job, so it can be set that only managers have the ability to access the 100% comp discount, or set it so that the happy hour discounts only apply at the bar. Here we can also determine which sections each job can send orders to. There is an option to add custom tender types in the system as well. Here we can determine how those tender types will operate. If they allow change, if a tip can be added, if it prompts for the drawer to be opened upon completing the sale, if it requires additional reference text such as a check number, and we can determine what jobs have access to which tender types. Loyalty is also configured from the advanced screen. Each menu item can be assigned a point value in the system. If the owner doesn't want to assign points to each individual item, we can also apply points across groups of items. Or we can configure the system so that each dollar spent is a point earned. Once we configure how the customers will earn points, we would switch over to discounts to assign a point value to the various discounts in the system. These are the same discounts which were available from the discount screen. We'll then back out and navigate over to the daily screen. There are three main reports which are available on the daily screen. The first is a daily report, which shows an overview for the totals for one day. We can modify the time and date range in these reports, but if we're pulling information for more than a week, it's usually best to pull the full page reports, as the daily report, as the name implies, is intended for just one day. We can also view and print the cash drawer report from here. This will show an employee's interactions with the cash drawer, including cash in, cash out, cash drops, no sales, and removing the drawer. The third report type visible on this screen is the shift report, which is like the daily report, but only for one particular user. This is the same report that is available for the employees when they clock out at the end of their shift on the personal page. We'll now take a quick look at the fresh sheet. The fresh sheet allows for basic item tracking and can serve as a digital 86 board, which is going to show which items are currently unavailable. We could determine which items are tracked on the fresh sheet by browsing from a list of menu items in the system and sliding over items we wish to track on the right hand side. Once an item is being tracked, we can set how many of that item are left and at what threshold it will appear on the fresh sheet. If we take a look at the menu, we'll see that menu items which appear on the fresh sheet will have a small counter in the lower right hand corner of the screen. Once the item is sold out, it will be blacked out and show a red X where the counter was. These items are not able to be ordered. It's also going to show a list of which items are currently at what stock levels on the main sign-in screen. We'll log back in 
sign up to the manager page, and then navigate over to labor. By logging into the labor screen, a user can view, edit, create, or delete shifts. By selecting filter by employee, we can determine which employee shifts are being displayed. This way, if a user claims that they arrived at 3 o'clock, but forgot to clock in until 3.30, we can retroactively edit their shift so this is reflected in the reporting. We'll then navigate over to the Reports section. By accessing reports, we can view a wide range of information about the system. There are several different categories of reports available, including sales, auditing, customers, and labor. In total, there are over 100 base reports in the system, and there are several customizable flex reports as well. If we select a report, we can see that we must first select a time frame to pull that report from. There are a number of shortcuts listed here for common time frames, and if none of these fit what we're looking for, we can always select Enter Custom Date Range. Once we pull up the report, we can view the information provided. We can also choose to export that report. Each report in the system is exportable into four different formats, PDF, RTF, XLS, and CSV. XLS works with the Microsoft Excel program, and CSV stands for Comma Separated Value, a standard reporting format. XLS and CSV are commonly used if a client wants to export the information into another program. Most software programs that a client would work with can accept imports in one of these standard formats. So if we want to use an accounting software, a payroll software, or an inventory tracking software in conjunction with the point of sale system, we can export reports from the POS system into one of these formats and then load them into the third party software. Many of these reports available here are also available on Harbor Touch Online and can be accessed remotely from any computer with a web browser. Harbor Touch Online is a free service where business owners can find important information from the point of sale system. This is where the owner would access credit card processing information, such as their batch totals, deposits, and statements. The system can also pull reports directly from the POS, which are updated online within 10 minutes of a sale being ran on the POS station. This also allows for a user to access the POS system's menu and change the prices, deactivate items, or even create entirely new items all right from this web interface. Another free service provided by Harbor Touch is the HT Reservations and Waitlisting platform. This interface can be accessed on the point of sale system, on the web, or via an app on the iPad. Customers can go online to place a reservation or a host can manually add a reservation to the system. There are options for setting up criteria as to how many tables are available during what time frames. The other component of the HT reservation system is the waitlisting feature, which is used by those customers who neglected to make reservations. Just like for a reservation, we can enter in the name and phone number of the customer, and then when their table is ready, we can send an automated text message or phone call to let the customer know. This removes a need for clunky table pagers, which can't be taken far from the hostess stand. Tableside is another optional service which Harbor Touch offers. This product involves running a version of the Harbor Touch Hospitality software on an iPad. This isn't the full software. It won't let the user access the more complex features like the management screen, and at this time, checks cannot be paid out via the iPad app. This product is ideal for quickly placing orders and sending them to the kitchen. Harbor Touch Tableside helps the server by not requiring them to write down the order on a notepad and then run back to the POS station to send that order back to the kitchen. Instead, they can go from one table right to the next while placing orders on the iPad, sending them directly to the kitchen. There is an additional cost for the Tableside app. It's $20 a month for the first iPad registered and $15 a month for each additional iPad registered. And Harbor Touch does not provide the Apple iPad itself, which must be purchased separately. Harbor Touch Hospitality also supports online ordering. A major advantage of the Harbor Touch online ordering system is that it syncs directly with the database on the POS. This means that the employees won't need to check email or a fax machine for online orders, which will instead appear right on the POS screen as a new ticket, and it will automatically trigger the order to print right to the kitchen. It also means 
that because the online ordering system gets some menu information directly from the POS, so you won't have to worry about keeping two menus up to date. Once a change is made on the POS system, it will automatically update the same item on the online ordering menu. There are numerous options to customize the online ordering system, which include multiple order types, timing options, extra alerts, and delivery zones, which can be configured to sync with Google Maps. Harbor Touch online ordering is available with a one-time setup fee of $99. It then costs $20 a month. The first 50 transactions each month are free, and each transaction beyond that is 50 cents each. Harbor Touch is also offering a variety of mobile payment options for customers. If a customer wants to pay with a smartphone, they can download either the Tabbed Out app, which allows a customer to create a tab on the POS and pay it out from their phone, or the Perkwave app, which is currently under development, but will allow a customer to scan a QR code which appears on the guest check. They can then use their phone to pay out the check right from the table using Apple Pay. There will also be options available soon for NFC readers and EMV readers. These transactions will be ran on a special customer-facing pin pad, which connects directly to the POS station. If you think of any questions after the webinar, please feel free to contact your sales agent and they'll help you find the answers. Thank you for taking the time to attend the webinar today. We hope you found the presentation helpful and informative. Good luck making your decision on choosing a point of sale system and thank you for considering Harbor Touch. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day.